Hi everyone, welcome back to Confident Chemistry. I'm Samantha and today we're going to talk about drawing resonance structures for organic molecules. Feel free to take your own notes along with me or if you'd like you can go to my website at confidentchemistry.com and download a copy of today's PDF. We're going to start off by looking at this molecule, the acetate anion. As you can see, the bottom oxygen here has three lone pairs and one single bond, so it has a negative formal charge. The top oxygen has a double bond and two lone pairs, so it's neutral. But if we moved a couple of these electron pairs around, we could redraw the molecule another way. What we would end up with is the top oxygen having the three lone pairs and the single bond and the negative formal charge. And then the bottom oxygen would have the double bond and the two lone pairs, making it neutral. This is an example of a molecule that has what we call delocalized electrons. That extra negative charge in this molecule isn't stuck or localized on one of the oxygens. In reality, this molecule looks a little bit more like a hybrid of the first two drawings. As I'm drawing it out, you'll see what I mean. The bonds between the central carbon and the oxygens are both about 1.5, somewhere in between a single and a double bond. And we draw a delta minus on those oxygens to symbolize that there's a little bit of negative charge on each of them, but really the negative charge is distributed across the whole molecule. Although this structure on the right is really nice for showing the reality of this molecule and the reality that electrons are delocalized across it, it's not really that easy to draw and it's not super straightforward to just look at. Organic chemists really prefer to have simple, straightforward drawings of their molecules. And so for molecules like this one that have delocalized electrons, we prefer to use a tool called resonance structures. And that's exactly what these two molecules on the left hand side are. They're resonance structures of the acetate anion. The molecule on the right hand side is called the resonance hybrid. And it shows sort of the average between those two resonance structures. As a convention, organic chemists put a double-headed arrow between the resonance structures that represent a molecule and often put square brackets around the set of resonance structures. When we see this double-headed arrow, we might be tempted to think of the equilibrium arrow, but that's not what this arrow means. Resonance is not a process. The structures are not flipping back and forth, alternating between one and the other. Resonance structures are a tool that remind us that in the reality of the molecule, the electrons are spread out. In order to become skilled at recognizing delocalized electrons and drawing resonance structures, we first need to be able to take our drawings and push electrons around using arrows, just like I did in the previous example. We're gonna be looking for three specific ways we can move pairs of electrons around. A lone pair to a pi bond, a pi bond to a lone pair, or a pi bond to become another pi bond. It's important to remember that when we're drawing these arrows, the arrow always goes from a pair of electrons, either in a bond or a lone pair, to the place where you want them to go. We're gonna go back to our first molecule, the acetate anion, as our example. I'm gonna redraw it here just so it's much bigger and we can see how we're moving our electron pairs around. So the bottom oxygen has three lone pairs and one bond, so it's got a negative formal charge. And that top oxygen has two lone pairs and a double bond, it's neutral. So we're gonna push this pair of electrons from the atom down in to form a bond. And then we have to move that other pair of electrons up to the top oxygen because carbon can't have five bonds to it. So the first move was a lone pair to form a pi bond. And the second move was a pi bond to become a lone pair. So let's redraw the molecule after we've pushed the electrons. So on top now we have three lone pairs and one bond, so it's a negatively charged oxygen. And then the bottom now has two lone pairs and a double bond. In this next example, we're gonna look at a molecule called the allyl cation. It's really special in a lot of organic chemistry reactions. 
I'm going to draw it just a little bit bigger and I'm going to include the implicit hydrogen atoms just so it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So the carbon atom here on the right hand side has a formal positive charge. It only has three bonds, no lone pairs. So it's a perfect spot where we can move this pi bond from the left side of the molecule over to the right. So this is an example of a pi bond to pi bond move. And what we end up with when we redraw the molecule here is now that right hand side carbon is neutral and the left hand side carbon has a positive formal charge. All right, this next example is benzene. You've probably seen this molecule before. I'm gonna redraw it again just so it's nice and big and we can see what's going on. So ben benzene is a six membered ring and there are three double bonds in the ring. So each of the carbons has one implicit hydrogen. They're just not drawn in. So we can move this pi bond down, but because we can't have five bonds to a carbon, we've got to move the next pi bond and the next pi bond over. So that results in another benzene molecule. We've just displaced the pi bond. So that's how we generate the other resonance structure of benzene. If you keep practicing lots and lots of examples like this, drawing resonance structures is gonna become second nature to you. You might have noticed something about all of the examples that we've used so far. With acetate, benzene, and the allyl cation, the two resonance structures that we drew for each of these molecules were equivalent to one another. The reality of those molecules, the hybrid, is exactly in between the two resonance structures. However, there are many molecules that have what we call non-equivalent resonance structures. So when we have molecules with delocalized electrons, each of the resonance structures that we can draw for the molecule is what we call a contributor to that reality. In some molecules, they're all equal, just like the examples we saw before, and in other molecules, like this example here, acetone, there are major and minor contributors. So this acetone molecule, we can move the electrons from the pi bond up to the oxygen on the top. And the resonance structure that we end up with for that molecule, now there's three lone pairs on the top oxygen, it has a negative formal charge, and the carbon on in the middle here only has three bonds, and so it's got a positive formal charge. So when we have two resonance structures that look very different from one another like this, what does our hybrid look like? For acetone, we would say that the structure looks mostly like the neutral molecule on the left, but it would have a bit of the character of the structure on the right. We can draw that by using partial positive and negative charges, just like I did here. We would label that neutral structure on the left as the major resonance contributor, and the charge-separated structure on the right as the minor resonance contributor. If you're doing an assignment or a test for your organic chemistry course, a really common question format that you might see is one that asks you to compare or rank a group of resonance structures for the same molecule. Let's go through an example of one of these problems where we're asked to draw a series of resonance structures and then rank them. So our example molecule is this amide functional group here. And I'm gonna redraw it so that it's just a little easy, easier for us to push the electrons around in the drawing. We'll start by moving a pair of electrons from this pi bond up to become a lone pair on the oxygen atom. And when we redraw this molecule, we're going to end up with a negative formal charge on that top oxygen atom and a positive formal charge on the carbon atom. Next, we can take this lone pair on the nitrogen and move it over to become a new pi bond between the nitrogen and the carbon atom. When we redraw the molecule again, we'll see that that carbon atom has now become neutral because it has four bonds, and our nitrogen atom has gotten a formal positive charge. I'm going to label these three resonance structures A, B, and C, and then we can talk about how we're going to decide where they rank in terms of how much they contribute to the resonance hybrid. Let's zoom in and have a look at the guidelines that are gonna help us rank our resonance structures. 
Better resonance structures have more bonds and don't violate the octet rule. Better resonance structures have fewer formal charges, and better resonance structures distribute charge according to electronegativity. Looking at structure A, we can see that there are no separated formal charges and all of the atoms have full octets, so it seems like it's a good resonance structure. In structure B, we have formal charges and we have a carbon atom with an incomplete octet. In structure C, we also have separated formal charges, but we have no incomplete octets because of that double bond between the nitrogen and the carbon atom. So if we think about ranking these resonance structures from best to worst or from which one has the greatest to the least contribution to the resonance hybrid, we would say that A is the best structure, C is the next best, and B is the worst. So if you're really clever, you might be thinking, hey, I think she left out a possible resonance structure here. What would happen if we took this amide molecule, I'm gonna just redraw it again so you can see. What if we took the amide molecule and we moved a pair of electrons from the pi bond down to the carbon atom instead of up to the oxygen like we did before? If we redraw the structure, we're gonna end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So we've moved a pi bond down to become a lone pair on the carbon, which means it has three bonds and a lone pair so the carbon has a negative formal charge. We've left the oxygen with an empty octet, so it has a positive formal charge. A really terrible resonance structure that we would never consider because it actually violates all three of those guidelines. It has formal charges separated, and the formal charges are not distributed according to electronegativity. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and so oxygen should be the one to take a formal negative charge, not carbon. A structure like this is insignificant in terms of contributing to the hybrid. All right, now that you've learned how to draw resonance structures and how to evaluate them or compare them or rank them, let's do a few practice problems to see if our information has really sunk in. Feel free to pause the video and do the problems before me to test yourself, or if you're more comfortable, just follow along with me as I do the problems. In both of these problems, we're going to try to draw all the resonance structures for the molecule. We're gonna rank them, decide which ones are more important and which ones are less important. And we're gonna go a step further and try and figure out what that information tells us about how the molecule might react. Okay, so here's our first problem. We've got this nice hydrocarbon molecule here with a double bond as well as an aldehyde functional group. We're gonna to try to draw all the resonance structures we can for this molecule, so I'll redraw it with all the lone pairs in place, and then we're gonna start manipulating the electrons. So we'll start with the same move that we've been doing before, take the pi bond, move it up to the oxygen, which will leave us with a formal negative charge on the oxygen atom and a formal positive charge on that aldehyde carbon. Now because that positively charged carbon is missing a fourth bond, we are able to take this pi bond and move it over to become another pi bond. So we can redraw this molecule again after we moved the pi bond over. And what we end up with is we still have a negative formal charge on the oxygen. Now we've got a pi bond here, and now this carbon is missing a bond, so it's got the positive formal charge. If we think about ranking these three resonance structures, we know right away that because this first one doesn't have any separated charges, that it, it must be the major contributor to the resonance hybrid. The other two structures both have an atom with an empty octet, they both have separated charges, so they're minor contributors and they're about equal to each other. Here's where we're gonna take our organic chemistry thinking a step further. What do these resonance structures say about the reactivity of this type of molecule? Well, if we redraw it, we can consider that the two minor resonance structures are really showing us where there are areas of partial positive charge in the molecule. So to show that, I've drawn a delta plus on these two carbon atoms. And so those two minor resonance structures have shown us 
where this molecule might be susceptible to attack by something electron rich. All right, so here's our second example that we're gonna go through. This molecule is an aromatic ring with an amine functional group on it. The common name for this molecule is aniline. I actually used it a lot when I was doing research in my grad studies. So I will redraw it again so that it's bigger, easier to move electrons around. We're gonna start by taking the lone pair on the neutral nitrogen atom and moving it down to form a pi bond between nitrogen and carbon. But because that carbon can't have five bonds, we've gotta move that pair of electrons from the pi bond up to the other carbon to become a lone pair. When we redraw the molecule, we're going to end up with a nitrogen atom at the top that has four bonds, so it has a formal positive charge. And since we moved a pi bond up to become a lone pair on a carbon, don't forget that the, this carbon had an implicit hydrogen, right? So it's got three bonds and a lone pair. So now this carbon atom has a formal negative charge. Next, we can take this lone pair on the carbon atom. We can move it down to become a pi bond and then move the next pi bond up to become a lone pair on the bottom carbon atom. So we'll redraw the molecule again so I can show you what that looks like. Now the negative formal charge is on this bottom carbon here. We can do a similar series of moves where this lone pair goes to become a pi bond and then we push this pi bond up to become another lone pair. and we end up with a negative formal charge on this left-hand upper carbon atom here. And finally, we can take that pair of electrons, move it to become a pi bond, and then move the adjacent pi bond up to become a lone pair on the nitrogen, and we regenerate our first resonance structure, the neutral species. The original neutral structure is the major resonance contributor, and the other three are minor but significant contributors that are about equal to each other. So what does this tell us about how this molecule might react in a chemical reaction? The minor resonance contributors each have negative formal charges on a carbon atom. So what this shows us is that in the reality of the molecule, there's some partial negative charge on these three carbon atoms. These three specific carbons might be a site of reaction depending on what the molecule is exposed to. Thanks again, everyone, for studying with me today. I really hope that this video has helped you feel more confident with drawing resonance structures and understanding their significance in organic chemistry. 